Hi everyone, I hope you're all keeping well and safe. This is Mr Neil Wright at here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. So of a patient who's actually a big uh, Facebook fan. Um, so is their daughter. They attended last week and I did promise I'll try and get this video up as soon as I can. I also airdropped this procedure to the patient. They had a, a, an iPhone and with the eye clear scope because we use an iPod as the viewing monitor and camera, we've got the capability of airdropping procedures to patients. Um, now their main complaint was that they severe, experienced severe itchiness and irritation in their ears. Now the patient has got very narrow ear canals and they suffer from a condition called otitis externa. Otitis externa is an umbrella term for an infection and or inflammation of the outer ear canal and the outermost membrane of the eardrum. So the eardrum has three membranes. You've got the inner membrane, which is a mucosa membrane, which um, is exposed in the middle ear. You've got a middle membrane, which is made up of um, fib fibrous tissue, connective tissue. And then you've got the outermost layer, which is a layer of skin, the same skin that lines the ear canal. So you get different grades, different levels of otitis externa. I've kind of almost simplified them. You can get, um, generally it's termed superficial, Otitis externa, that's when it's just the surface of the ear canal that's got a bit of dry skin, eczema psoriasis, just like it in this patient. And theirs is more lateral, so you can see I've taken that dry piece of hard wax out of the ear using suction. You can get deep otitis externa. Deep otitis externa is when you get a bit of inflammation, a bit of swelling in the ear canal. Then you can get more severe um, cases of otitis externa. It's known as necrotizing. <coughs> or malignant otitis externa. It's more common amongst the elderly, um, those who are immunocompromised, diabetic. And that's when, because the immune system's not as strong and as effective, the ear infection of the ear canal can start spreading rapidly uh, across the, um, uh, almost to their brain. Uh, in some cases, in some occasions it can cause um, a brain abscess, meningitis, it can cause Bell's palsy, so damage to the facial nerve, which is on the pomultry of the um, organ of hearing. So the cochlea you know, in the inner ear, you've got the facial nerve. So that's exposed in the middle ear as well. And the reason for that is, for example, diabetics, they've got um, damage to the blood vessels, so they don't, there's not a constant or rich supply of blood, which helps to fight infection. Um, and obviously if you're <coughs> immunocompromised you're more susceptible to infection so three types um, <laughs> there's no official grading I don't believe for this but it's kind of what I've termed myself superficial so it's just surface dead skin psoriasis eczema like this patient has um, then you get deep otitis externa uh, where it's more um, it's more swollen and inflammation and then you can get quite severe otitis externa so necrotizing malignant uh, I kind of learnt that from, believe it or not, um, I used to have a German Shepherd, um, so I'm trying to remember what age I was, this was in my teenage years, her name was um, Gally, and German Shepherds, you may not be aware, but they suffer from German Shepherd pyoderma, so it's a skin condition, and you constantly having to go to the vets, um, used, to put, used to give us corticosteroid cream, and... The vet kind of explained to me there's different levels of German Shepherd pyoderma. It's superficial. For that, we were trying to use more natural um, remedies because you want to avoid steroids, prolonged use of steroids. So we used to use tea tree cream, for example. But if it was deep German Shepherd pyoderma, so there's inflammation, swelling there, they used to give steroids. So that's kind of where I've developed my own kind of grading system for otitis externa in the human ear. So what I'm trying to do now for this patient is just peel as much dead skin up as I can. It's quite... We're never going to get all this dead skin off. It's just near on impossible. So we're just trying our best. And to peel this dead skin, we are having to make contact with the canal wall. And laterally, it's on the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal. And we can apply a bit of pressure because that's cartilage. It's semi-sensitive. doesn't mean that it's non-sensitive. It, if, you're, if you're quite aggressive in the outer cart cartilaginous portion, it can still cause a bit of injury and trauma. To, it can be unpleasant for the patient. But if... We're on the inner two-thirds of the ear canal, the bony part, and we start uh, bumping into the canal wall. It can be really, really uncomfortable for the patient. Now, this skin is really thick. It's strongly adhered. So I'm just slowly but surely 
peeling it away. So we're just at the base of the ear canal here and anteriorly. You can see we're just trying to, trying to bring this skin together and then peel it. Going to compare it to when you've got some uh, sticky tape, sellotape tape on an envelope or a piece of paper or some cardboard, and you're trying to remove this sticky tape by gently peeling it without damaging the envelope or the piece of paper or the cardboard outer layer. And that's what kind of what we're doing. Obviously, in the ear, the patients are awake, it's a lot more sensitive, you, you can be really uncomfortable. Um, in terms of um, patient, we just advise the patient, we've given them some over the counter -count treatment for the moment, suggested some um, acetic acid spray. Um, so the ear should be slightly acidic in pH. I think it's about 5.4. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. And the acidity of the ear is quite useful. It inhibits certain bacterial growth, it repels insects, or tries to repel insects. And earwax itself is naturally acidic. Um, However, when you develop otitis externa, studies have shown when they've done a pH swab, is that the acidity from the ear turns from an acidic pH to more to an alkaline, just above 7, around 7.4 to 8. So these acidic, acetic acid sprays you can get over the counter are designed to re-acidify the ear. And by re-acidifying the ear, the acid hopefully would inhibit the bacterial growth that's causing this otitis externa, or obviously if it's fungal, so to mycosis. Um, I, I, I believe, um, I was watching uh, an ENT surgeon who did a YouTube video about uh, acetic acid and they made reference to, and I give them credit of course, that a lot of Olympic swimmers for example, and again don't quote me on this, this is what I've heard from a third party, a lot of Olympic swimmers they actually use acetic acid before and after swimming in the water so to re because the water can wash away the acidity so finish with the left ear just in the right ear again a really hard dry piece of wax dead skin suction wasn't going to remove that so i've gently used an ear hook i've prized it off the posterior canal wall so i've loosened it i've then embedded the tip of the hook within the core of the wax and i'm just rotating the hook in a different direction getting quite deep there now slowly but surely extracting it you just see how dark that is, so that's been there for a while, it's oxidised. So again, more medially, the ear canal is really healthy. So there's a lovely view of the eardrum, which is nice and healthy. The canal wall, medially, on the bony part, looks pretty good. It's just more laterally here. You can see all this dead skin, and it's, it's really, really frustrating for the patient's itchiness. It's just something that they suffer from chronically. It can really get them down. Um, now, with the acetic acid spray, I think, in terms of guidance of use, you can't overuse it, so the initial course is seven days. Um, thereafter, I've advised the patient to avoid watering the ear. Again, if you've been watching my video, you know I'm really anti-watering the ear. Water can cause all host of problems. In fact, I had a, an email from a clinical ear care specialist in the UK, just, just I think it was on Friday, and I, unfortunately went to my chunks. So I only read it yesterday, and I replied back to them immediately. They, they, they perform earwax removal, they use ear irrigation and they were really concerned by the number of people that are coming back with ear infections and they were just asking for tips from me. Obviously the main tip was, was to avoid <coughs> water, um, uh, but currently that's all they're trained in. So the best advice I could give was, obviously they're, doing, they're following all the precautions when they're performing ear irrigation. So the tank itself, they're sterilising that every day, it's a special tablet. So when you have your ears irrigated at the doctors or nurses, uh, in primary care, um, the irrigation system, um, just to kill any bacteria in the tank, um, they use a special sterilising tablet. So they're doing that. They, uh, they're doing everything else fine. The temperature, the water, it's what it should be. If it's too cool, it can get the chronic effect as well. Um, so they're doing everything they can. However, patients are still coming out with chronic ear infections. Things on top, um, and they also use a bit of dry mopping. So. And in America, dry mopping is used a lot. Uh, they give it a cotton wool and you, you attach it to the end of a Jobson horn or St. Bart's ear hook. There's a serrated tip there and the, the cotton wool, kind of, you wrap it around the serrated tip and then you don't go into the end spin it. I don't like doing that because I think, well, you're grazing, really you're grazing the ear canal. 
deeper in the ear as well, so making it more susceptible to infection in some ways. And you can always get these fibres that come, come loose in the, in the ear. But they're doing that also with the majority of their patients. So the only additional advice I gave was to uh, use a hairdryer. Now, guys, do this very, uh, again, you're going to use some, apply some common sense as well. You don't want to put the hairdryer right next to your ear, a full pelt. You're going to perforate your eardrum. Just at a distance, at the, uh, trying to do a cord. So on my hairdryer, I've got an eco mode, so it's kind of room temperature. Um, and little brief moments, four or five seconds, and you stop. But you're always doing it from a distance, in the lowest setting. So just having some, always ventilating the ear as opposed to drying it with a hairdryer, just ventilating it. Um, and also just advise some acetic acid as well. So ear calm, which is over the, we call it ear calm and over the counter in the UK. That will help reacidify the ear because water can wash away some of the natural acids in the ear. So you're kind of reacidifying it post getting water in. But the best advice I could give to that clinical ear care specialist as well, get trained in using mechanical removal so with hooks and scoops and forceps and also micro suction so you can see you've got this is a bit of skin here the base of the ear canal just using a fine end gauge it's been a bit of controversy i think with my terminology apologies guys um gorgeous gauge um i'm using a fine tip sucker i'll just call it from now on from now, that, from now on i think if i can remember but just gently lifting this off the base of the ear canal. It'll be really, really gentle. I don't want to touch the canal wall. That game of operation, the patient will start buzzing and, well, not be very happy if I do because it will be very uncomfortable for them. So, again, we're not going to be able to get every little last back out. It's just not possible, guys. I'm just going to do as much as we can as safely as possible. And we're giving some patients some ear care tips. They are a keen swimmer as well, so we've recommended that uh, obviously really discuss water precautions, so some custom-made swim bowls or over-the-counter ones as well, but custom ones are better. However, if they're a bit more expensive, so they're going to try the ones at the counter and then grab it back if need be. So the was really healthy both sides, got a lovely light reflex. It's a real finesse procedure, these ones. So just on the lateral canal, well, this is the cartilaginous portion, so we can put a bit of pressure here. When you've got a patient with a very narrow twisty here like this, we just have to really stretch the the ear open. So if we can straighten that first bend to make it in line with the second bend, it turns the ear canal into a straight cylindrical tube. Otherwise, the ear canal is like an S bend. And we've got two um, instruments in the ear, or even if it's one instrument, if you've got the sucker, um, that's a straight instrument. Uh, it can make it difficult to navigate the bends of the ear. So by straightening the ear, you can use straight instrument. You can make the precision much easier, basically, for yourself. So we're having to do that with this patient on both sides. The ear canal is very narrow, very bendy as well. All right, guys, I'm going to finish the narration there. It's just me peeling off the skin. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. And stay tuned for some more videos. Take care. Bye.